Do you guys like crazy horror movies? Good old spooky specters and stinky ghouls? Well today's sponsor, the Grim Hollow Monster Grimoire has you covered with 400 creatures crafted to fit any level of grimdark campaign. That's like a hundred more monsters than the core manual. On top of that, this book also contains monster loot, which, fitting darker campaigns, includes mostly body parts. Do you want to grind down the tooth of a vampire and use it as a tea sweetener? Well this book is for you. Do you have trouble designing encounters, or are the encounters that you do make too predictable? Well the monster grimoire is also for you. It has detailed guides and advice for altering monster types and designing the perfect encounter. Check out their Kickstarter that's probably on track to beat the Seeker's Guide, but they're my friends, so it's okay. Enjoy the video. Welcome to a weird video where I try a new idea that has potential and then I either forget the formula or misunderstand the lack of traction and then probably not make another one. Today we'll be posing the question, what if Mothman had a D&D encounter? Now if you don't know Mothman or don't know the details of the story, let me run through some of them. In November of 1966, in a pleasant town in West Virginia, a couple was reported to have seen a big dude with wings. Then a news publishing, accompanied by a bunch of following sightings, true or not, gave us a few more details. This thing was supposedly about 7 feet tall, with a wingspan of over 10 feet, and it had large eyes that were incredibly good at reflecting light. And then, naturally, the government showed up and told everyone to stop spreading fear to the public because that was their job. And now it's just kind of a map marker gift shop novelty character. So there's the objective story, and I don't really care if it's true or not because we've gotten enough weird shit as it is. Did you see the alien stuff recently? A lot of the guesses afterwards have been uh, overgrown storks or giant owls, which line up with the fact that these stories mention that the thing didn't have arms. So naturally, they built this statue because the game of telephone writes human history. There was an area right by the town called the TNT area that was used to uh, test explosives on nature. Those are all the tools I need. I'm going to take my myth grab bag and run with it. It's fantasy time. So let's build a Mothman. Its given features are being a large humanoid with wings instead of arms that might resemble something between an owl and a bat. The dude can supposedly fly a hundred miles per hour. He's known to approach humanoids who are usually in pairs, and it's important to note that if he did attack anybody, then he won the fucking fight. If there are no reports of attacks, then there are no reports of failed attacks. So let's give our Mothman a motivation. If it's drawn to areas with high energy potential, like dormant gunpowder, light, and teens getting steamy in cars, then it's either looking for a challenge, it needs warmth to survive, or it snuffs out unnatural light that disturbs the nighttime. I'll go with a mix of all that, where it has a high power capacity, but it needs to absorb other sources of power to maintain its level of energy. So my Mothman uses its legendary glowing eyes as magical siphons and it's drawn to powerful spellcasting. Sort of like a beholder's central eye that causes dead magic, but instead it sort of eats the magic that it sees. When containing a lot of power, these eyes might even glow a raging red on their own. So let's make it a traveling encounter that can only happen at night and is especially likely if the party has set up a fire. It would approach silently like an owl, only noticeable as blotted out stars or by the keen sense of a party member. If no one notices the Mothman approaching, it would either wait until a spellcaster is awake or take direct action against the fire. So round one, the Mothman glares at the fire using its ability, let's say cone of energy sapping, to consume the flames and fuel its upcoming fight. This ability would function as an action or a reaction, be based on its line of sight, and could convert any active energy like fire or magic into temporary hit points. I think it'd also be fun to use this pool of temporary hit points as a type of sorcery point pool. We'll get into that in a second. So round one is over. The fire or the first spell cast gets eaten, and the party is either stirring or ready to fight. Now due to this thing's lack of arms, it would use its altitude to its advantage. Mothman is going to be flying around the battlefield like an angry bird protecting its nest. I think it would target archers first, saving spellcasters until they offer up some high-level spells and keep away from melee fighters. The scarier parts of the encounter come from its size, its completely silent flight, and its ability to absorb some of the party's efforts. Moths aren't attackers, and they aren't bipedal, but owls have some thick-ass thighs, and sharp-ass toes, so Mothman is definitely going to be a foot fighter. 
If he gets enough temporary hit points, like using a Planeswalker ability, I would think he could either amplify his leg strength and haul party members into the air in order to drop them, or shoot uncomfortably silent eye lasers into the skulls of fighters. It's not invincible, but it would be strong. After all, there is only one Mothman. I'd put it somewhere around challenge rating 11 while writing the script, but I'll probably slap it together in D&D Beyond for you guys to use, and I'll put it here or at the end of the video. Now how do our brave heroes beat the Mothman? I would think it might get overwhelmed by actual sunlight, because it would be like eating a buffet of energy all at once. You'd explode. So too much energy stored up could kill it, especially if you're casting a spell that uses actual daylight. On the other end, as I said before and as everything in nature does, it attacks what it's most afraid of, non-magic archers. It can eat magic and it can eat heat, but not the momentum of a flying arrow. And lastly, the easiest way to take it down is to literally take it down. If you manage to grapple the Mothman, which might be hard because this is a silent seven-foot-tall beefcake of untold strength, eh, but let's say you do. Suddenly it's at a massive disadvantage because it's standing on its legs, losing half of its attacks per turn and close proximity to slashing or bludgeoning damage would spell a swift end to this campsite interruption. That felt like a short script, but I could see it as a really thrilling encounter that could imply a few different things. Maybe the area that the party just entered is high in magic, heat, or light, enough to draw in a powerful predator that targets those things. It could also imply that the night is not as safe as they assumed, and there might be more unique anomalies in this region. Or just that the DM saw this video and wanted to have some fun. But probably the last one. Go do that. The video's over. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it.